So, page 140, number one. Uh, okay, girls, girls. Okay, we're supposed to solve this for M. So, how do I solve that for M? If I was solving this equation for x, what, what would I do? I multiply by 2. If I'm solving this equation for m, what would I do? Multiply by v. Times v times v times v. D times v equals those cross dividing multiply cancel out equals m. M equals dv. Use candy corn. Why? So sorry, can I give you the rest of that stuff? Candy corn makes my throat hurt because like it's too sweet. It's like all sugar. What's the ten equals x over two? That's an example. I'm not candy corn like those. How would you solve this? Times two, so you times v on this one. Did you know you had to times two on this one? So you times v on this one. Okay, number three. Hold on. So we're doing one through three, and then we're jumping to seven. So, yeah, if you get confused later, it's probably because you're doing the wrong problem. S equals C H plus R. Okay, this one we're solving for R. So how do I get R by itself? We don't want to do distributive property because we want to move everything away from R, not together. We don't want to put things together. We want to get rid of things. Divide by divide. C. Yeah, since the whole right side is multiplied by C, I'm going to divide by C. Yes. Yay. That goes away. I don't need parentheses anymore since only H plus R is on the right side. And then do what with the H? Subtract so H. Okay, <coughs> on number seven, it says find the unit rate. You guys remember what unit rate meant? It was like the triangle the time. Exactly, exactly. 11 words, so some book, I guess, has 1,100 words in four pages. So, does anybody remember what unit rate meant? It meant how many words in one page? Like how many of these for just one of these? Unit means one thing, right? So how many words would there be in one for each page? Yeah, you divide. So usually the book writes their answer something like this. 275 words per page. That division bar, division thing is really the same thing as the fraction bar. We just divided by four. On uh, number eight, it says that they bought three tires for 40 bucks, or wait, 80 bucks, but they got one for free. So how many tires did they really buy? Three, two. Four. four. They, they bought three tires, got the four three. So really, it's just a fancy way of saying you got four tires for 80 bucks. So the starting ratio on number eight is $80 for four tires. And you have to figure out how much does each one tire cost. Okay, now we're jumping to 11. All right, you guys remember how we did 11? We don't. What did we do on 11 to solve for Y? Cross, cross multiply. multiply. So it's 12 times y equals 25 times 20. So 
So it's still an equation. Uh, 25 times 20, I believe is 500. 500 divided by 12. I don't know, that that's too big. It's like 41 and 2 thirds. How would you say 41.6 repeating. You can put 41 and 2 thirds or 41.6 repeating. It's okay. Alright, do you guys remember how to do number 12? It's still cross multiply, right? It's still cross multiply, you just have to do 9 times x and minus 1, and six equals 6 times x and plus 1. Okay, 13, this one's kind of a mess. Um, I didn't put, before we do this, I'm not going to put a problem like 13 on the test, okay? But it says the ratio of masses of hydrogen and oxygen in water is 1 to 8. You have any idea what they're talking about in that? You guys know what mass means? The amount of water. Weight. Weight. So you guys know that water is like H2O? Yes. That means there's two hydrogen and one oxygen in each molecule of water. But oxygen is heavier than hydrogen is. So anyway. What they're saying is for each gram of or hydrogen in water, there are oops, eight grams of oxygen. I'll say OX. Okay, here's the thing. Normally we set these up like one to eight is equal to like something to something. Remember doing these? Here's the problem though. It says how many grams of each are in 90 grams of water? So does water go with hydrogen or oxygen? Uh, Trick question. Water. Neither. All of the above, really. So the 90 grams of water, let's put H2O over here, uh, the water should go with the water, but we don't have a water here. So how do I find if hydrogen weighs one and oxygen weighs eight, then what does the total water molecule weigh? Nine. Nine. So really, I, instead of like one hydrogen to eight oxygen, I need like one hydrogen to nine water. That's what makes this one tricky. Because I need my ratios to match. One hydrogen to nine water equals how much hydrogen, I'll call it X, to 90 grams of water. So now what do I do? Cross multiply. That was my score. One times 90 equals nine times X. So X is 10. 10. X stands for the hydrogen. So I'll just put 10 grams of hydrogen. So what this means is if you have 90 grams of water, 10 of those come from the weight of the hydrogen. So how much comes from the water, from the oxygen? 80. 80. So because we've got 90 total, if 10 of it is hydrogen, then that leaves 80 for the oxygen. That kind of makes sense. Yeah, should should yeah, it makes it a little more, it's a little easier to understand if you kind of get science. Well, I, I won't put this one on the test. I will definitely put cross multiply on the test, but not that specific trick. No, I'm not going to do that. Definitely will be cross multiply. All right, uh, let's look at 14. What is the actual distance? Uh, 14 is much easier. Um, it says the scale of the map is one inch to 40 miles. So that's your first ratio. And then it says the two towns are 5.25 inches on the map. So where are you going to put the 5.25? Yeah. 
across from the one. Because the one would represent the fake map. It's the tiny thing. 40 miles represents the real life, right? So the 5.25 inches should go across from the inches, basically. So how far is that in real life? Okay, we're not going to actually do that right now. Number 15. 15, kind of the same thing. A popular manufacturer of die cast metal toys uses a 1 to 64 scale. What does that mean? A toy maker uses a 1 to, well, models, whatever, uses a 1 to 64 scale. What does that mean? That means the real thing is how many, how many times, let's say, taller than the toy. 64 times taller than the toy. So, anyway, that's our ratio. 1 to 64 should equal, um, it says the car is 16 feet long. How long is the model? So where should the 16 feet go? Top. No. Toy, real life. Car is 16 feet long. Is that a toy or real life? That's real. 16 feet. So this is... X is our toy. No, it does say toy in that model. Anyway. 1 times 16 equals 64 times X. Here's the thing though, the toy would be 0.25 feet tall. We probably wouldn't say 0.25 feet though. How tall is, it's one fourth of a foot, what's one fourth of 12 inches? Three inches, so we probably actually I probably I wouldn't count it off if you put 0.25 or fourth, but uh, since I'm talking about what I guess three inches would be the better answer. What number was that? Okay, on 14 you don't have to convert from inches to miles because the converter does inches to miles. Does that make sense? On 14, it says 1 inch is 40 miles. So it already does the convert, converting for you. This one, it didn't do that. It just said it's 64 to 1. It doesn't convert from feet to inches. So on 15, we had to do a little extra work. 16, I better do 16 with you because that's a doozy. It says a rectangular room has dimension 7.5. What's that symbol mean? Inches. inches by six inches. On a plan that has a scale of one to 24. Okay, again, is one to 24 converting from inches to feet for us? No. No, it is not, unfortunately. So we're gonna have to, the picture, 7.5 inches is actually smaller than what I drew on board. The picture is not very big. The room, it's going to be a lot bigger. 24 times longer, 24 times wider. Okay, determine the number of square feet of carpet needed for the room. So this is how big it is in the picture. How many square feet of carpet do we need to buy so we can cover the floor? How do we find area of a rectangle? Multiply. Yeah, length times width. Sometimes they call it base and height. Yeah, you just multiply. Because it's like, how many square feet cover the floor? These tiles on the ground, that's what a square foot looks like. If you got a ruler out, if you got a ruler out and dropped it on the ground, it would be, you know, it fit perfectly. One foot by one foot. Anyway, so that's kind of how we measure space on the ground. If you say my house is 1,600 square feet, that tells you how big somebody's house is. Anyways, uh, I'm getting sidetracked here. So this is inches. 
That's not the real room. How do I turn it into the real room? Basically going to be 24 times longer and wider. But if I do it as a ratio thing, it's 1 to 24 equals... Should 7.5 go across from 1 or 24? Is it the fake or the real thing? It's fake. It's the picture. 7.5 inches is tiny. This is 7.5 inches. Okay, the real room is like this room. It's not going to be 7.5 inches. It's going to be like 30 feet or whatever. Anyway, so 7.5 should go across the little one. X is the big one. One X or X equals 24 times 7.5. Hundred eighty. Yeah. Okay. The ratio did not convert it to feet for it, so that means it's hundred eighty inches. Oh, we'll get to that in a second. What do you think I'm going to do with this six up here? Same thing. Yeah. So that's a six. So basically, we have to do six times twenty-four also. No, that's too big. Twenty-four times six. Oh, I got, oh, that's 144 four, 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 inches. Oh, uh, what? Oh, I didn't have 24 times 6 is 144 inches. Yeah, I got, I did that and I got 25,120 inches. Okay, this is how long and wide the room are in real life, 180 inches. So we don't describe this room in inches. What would we describe a room in? Feet. Feet. How do I turn 180 inches into feet? Divide by 12. Divide by 12. Has somebody done that already? Yeah. That is? 15 feet by 12 feet. 15 feet. 12 feet. Not a very big room, really. 15 feet. So if each of these is a foot, then this is 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's good. It's not very big. That's good video right there. Yeah, you have to be cut off here. It's like maybe some of you have a bedroom that this size. This would be a million views. That's going viral for sure. Bye, baby. I'm on YouTube. How about we make a racist joke so we get more views? No, no, you're gonna get views. People are not gonna come. Uh, okay. No, I'm just gonna cancel. Actually, we're not done. Cause you remember what the question was? What's the area of the room? How do I find the area again? 15 times 12. 180 feet square. That's how you label an area. So when you go to the carpet store, you need to tell them, I need 180 square feet. Or maybe to be, make sure you have enough, you might say 200 square feet. Or just the problem just kept going. That's why we did it together. Okay, 17 says find x. Uh, the triangles are similar. Find x. Who remembers how we did that on Wednesday last week? Did you guys see the picture on 17? Oh, yeah. We did the Oh, yeah. How did we find x last week? We did ratios. 17 over x. Okay, 17 over x is the same thing as, we need more info. 25 over 20. 25 over 20. You guys see how I got that? No. So, in the picture, you see how 25 and 20 are matching sides? Yes. Oh, we got it. And see how 17 and x are matching sides? Yeah. All right. Twenty-five x equals three forty. Divide by twenty-five. Which will be thirteen. Three fifths. Thirteen point six. How do you do that? I 
I do a lot. Mr. Gore. I do a lot of math. That's why I get paid the big bucks. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's why you have a twenty hundred thousand square foot home. Made sense. Yeah, twenty hundred thousand. <laughs> big numbers. Too big for force to come. Actually, I could be cheating and just looking. I do have an answer. Oh yeah, you just like peek your eye out. Um, Actually, I did screw up. It was thir not 3.6, it's 13.6. I said it right. I said it right. Okay. Um, on eighteen, I'm not gonna do the full thing, but we can uh, do this. Use the same trick for perimeter for eighteen. So we're supposed to find the perimeter of the little triangle. What's the perimeter of the big triangle? All the things up. Yeah, I'm gonna wait while somebody does it. Or we nobody does it, we'll sit here forever. Oh yeah, okay. we don't do that guys. The assignment, the assignment won't change. Somebody yeah, do it. 70. 70. Okay, the big triangle has a perimeter of 70. The little triangle we'll call X. Guess what I'm gonna set that equal to? the same thing. So Big triangle is equal, over little triangle is equal to, right, we can just use 25 and 20 again. Okay. You guys can finish it from there. Should be the same as the ratio of the size. Yeah, it's fourteen hundred divided by twenty five. Yeah, X is the perimeter of the small triangle. Yes. Big triangle, small triangle equals big triangle, small triangle. Wait, what's seventy? Seventy is the perimeter of the big triangle. Oh, I think it was. Okay, actually, guys, 19 has a trick that we haven't learned yet, and we don't really need to learn it until next year, probably. So, let's jump to 21. Yeah, you need to do 20. Okay, it says find each, we did this one like last Tuesday or Monday or something. For each percent, fracture, decimal, state the equivalent expression in the other two forms. So if they give us a decimal, we need to write percent fraction. If they give us fraction, percent decimal, that kind of thing. We did this last week. 0. 0.5. So what is 0. 0.5 as a percent? 50%. Okay, what is it as a fraction? Two over four. One half. Two over four, five over ten. What does that reduce to, though? One half. One half. Percent just means out of 100, so it's 50 out of 100, but that reduces to one half. Okay. On 20, how do you change a decimal to a percent? Which way does the? How, how do you change? A, sorry, how do you change a percent to a decimal? Yeah, it goes this way. Actually, if it's right there, it's 0 0.005. It's less than. 1%, It's half of 1%. Okay, 23, don't forget to do two answers on 20 and 22. 23, write the appropriate percent equation and solve. It says 36%, uh, what, did, what did we write for 36%? 0.36. 0 0.36. Of what number? What do I put for that? Times x. Times x is 54. How do I solve that for x? Yeah, what's 
to my one algebra step. Divide by 0.36. Doesn't say rounded or anything, so we just need to figure out what that is. The answer should make sense. It's 36% of 150, about 54. Yeah, 36% is about a third. Okay, 24 is pretty close to the same thing, but there is one important difference. You guys see what's different on 24? What percent? The what percent is different. You multiply, you don't. So, well, no. Oh, You're going to write it very similar to 23. The difference is you need to turn your answer into a percent. So let's say the answer was, let's say we got x is 3.5. How do I turn that to a percent? You move it to the right. Yeah. Decimal to percent, you go to the right. Percent to decimal, you go to the left. So this would be 350%. That's not the answer, by the way. Don't, don't write that down. Don't put that. Okay, 25. Okay, complete the table. Round to the tenths place. What's the tenths place? What is the tenths place, girl? Right after the decimal. First decimal place. Okay, number 25. It has the one formula we have to have memorized this uh, test, this chapter. So What's the percent the change formula? Change over a ring. Change the moment. Um, I'm going to try all my numbers over here. Olivia. It's a organization skills. I get it. Okay. Then how come some of the markers up front and the other ones don't take down? Yes. So it does. It's organization. Yes, it does. Okay. Change divided by original. It's not a fresh. Okay. Change divided by original. Okay. What is the change? On number 25, what's changed? 36. 36 is the change. What is the original? What's 36 divided by 900? A lot. A number. Whoa, so smart. 0.04. 0.04. What percent is that? 4%. 4 percent. Okay. The second question said, what is the, the new amount going to be? Yeah. So the old amount, the original amount was 900. And then it said we're going to change by going up 36. It said plus 36. So we do 900 plus 36. 936. Whoa. What does 4% have anything to do with that problem? Right. Four percent of nine hundred is thirty-six. Four percent of nine hundred is thirty-six. Anyway. All right. So twenty-seven. This was the uh, the assignment from last week where the last four were hard. Twenty-seven is like the hard one. One of the hard ones. Um, basically. Listen, girls. Basically, what 27 means is that 20% of the original amount must be 35. You guys get that? 20% of whatever the original amount was has to be 35. Because we're decreasing by 20%, we're decreasing by 35. So 20% of the original must be that 35. So 20%, tell me what's right. 0.20 of the original oh, okay, N is 35. 20% of the original is 35. Is that 35 divided by 0.2? 27 by yeah. okay. Okay, 175 must be the original. 
So how do I find the final amounts? Right. It told us it's supposed to decrease by 35. So if I subtract 35, I get... It, it told us on the problem that we're supposed to decrease by 35. Uh -huh. So I did this minus 35. Okay, guys, we're going to uh, save the word problems for tomorrow, so you guys are just responsible for the even sound. Remember, we skipped a lot, so watch out which problems you're doing. We are, so we're doing the rest of it tomorrow. Starting at 28 through their word problems, so they will take a while, but we'll do the rest of it. So is this not due tomorrow? It's due, yeah, due on Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. Well, you might not have Honestly, time. I had a feeling that I was going to be doing this. Usually the review assignments are pretty big. Um, you might not have time to work on this tomorrow, though. Maybe you will, but I doubt it. Yeah, I still Study hall is nice, but it adds an extra hour.